the dying thief hope. Pilate washed his hands in the sight of the people as expressing his innocence of Jesus' death. Then he gave the necessary orders for the execution. The Roman government expected him to be absolutely just in respect to Roman citizens. Dealings with others were to be conciliatory. Two thieves were crucified at the same time, one on either side of Jesus, over whose head was charged the crime for which he was crucified. Jesus, the King of the Jews. Few deaths are so painful as crucifixion. One thief made sport of Jesus, saying, If you are God's Son, the Messiah and King, prove it by coming down from the cross. If Jesus had saved his life, he could not have become the King and Savior of the world. Because only by his death could the death sentence against Adam and his race be met. Jesus died willingly, a sacrificial death. The other thief defended Jesus, saying that he had done nothing amiss, whereas they were receiving a just penalty. After this defense, the penitent thief turned to Jesus, saying, Lord, if you are a king, and ever come into your kingdom, remember this poor thief. Do something for me. Jesus replied, Amen. That is, so be it, as you ask. Although I seem to have not a friend in heaven or earth, yet I say unto you this dark day, you shall be with me in paradise. My kingdom will be established. Under its influence, earth will become a paradise. You shall be rewarded there. The misplacement of the comma in our common English version has thrown us all astray. Evidently, Jesus did not go to paradise that day because paradise is not yet established. Furthermore, three days after, when he arose from the dead, he said to Mary, I have not yet ascended unto my Father. St. Peter tells us that he was dead and that his soul was raised from the dead on the third day. All people are to be blessed by Messiah's kingdom, but penitence prepares for quicker blessings and fewer strikes.